Hey everyone, in this episode we will have a look at how we can integrate REST data or data from RESTful services in our GraphQL API. And this feature is actually not in the current release version, it's coming with version 13 around the November timeframe. But we already have previews to try these things out. So it's the right time to explore what we can do here. And I will give you a couple of outlooks how this feature actually will get better over the course of the next previews. With that, let's get started and let's have a look at how we can make that work. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's get into it. Okay, so this is my RESTful service. I again use the books and authors example here because uh, for its simplicity. And in this case, we split the data into two services. So we have this REST service here, which serves up the authors. So I have here John Skeet, Ian Griffiths, and Mac Matthew McDonald. And uh, we can ask our REST service by ID for an author. Basically, if we call the author's route and pass in the inner ID, we can get an author's JSON object. So let's try to do just that. So we go over here in our Chrome and then, oh, I forgot the UI. Let's just pick it up. It's on port 5227. So we are going to call authors and then pass in the ID one. And that gives us a simple JSON object here. And in this case, we have John Skeet. We have a bio about John Skeet, a birth date, and an ID. Okay, so then we have our GraphQL API, and at the moment our GraphQL API has just a book entity, and uh, we have a books repository where we have a couple of books. We have a reference to these authors that we have in our other service, so we reference to them by an ID here, the author ID. But apart from that, there is no object, no author object in this GraphQL service. And then we have the query root type here, which allows us to get the book by ID or get all the books. So very, very simple thing. Let's .NET Watch run that. Well, actually .NET Watch dash dash no hot reload. So that we always will rebuild when we do a change. And then we can go over here to our GraphQL IDE banana cake pop, open a new tab and just explore the schema. So we can see we have our book by ID field on our query root type here in our books field. And if we go in there, it has three fields, author ID, ID and the title. So nothing special. And we could also query that, like we could ask for the books and uh, maybe for the title, fetch that. And you can see we get a list of uh, the titles here. So how do we fuse these two APIs, our REST API and our GraphQL API together? And that's fairly simple. What GraphQL needs is a type. So it needs to know how this type is structured that we want to integrate. So what we do is to introduce a new file called the schema.graphql file. And then we put in a typing for our author. In this instance, we just want to have or expose the name and the ID of our author in our GraphQL API. So we just type uh, our author type with these two fields. The second thing is that we kind of need to introduce a resolver here. Since we don't want to write JSON resolver for everything here, Hot Chocolate has you covered now with version 13. So you can just say from JSON and then Hot Chocolate will generate these resolvers for you. Okay, with this, we have typed our author and we also 
told our graphical engine how to resolve the values for this type. The next thing would be to integrate the author type with our book. So let's go to our book entity here and we don't want to change our entity. Let's say this maybe is in our business layer and we don't want to touch it. So there is a way in Hot Chocolate which we call type extensions to extend this type with other data. So essentially introduce new fields or new, uh, new properties to this book without touching it. Okay, so let's put in a book extensions class here. And uh, we're gonna use the extend object type attribute to mark this type as an extension of this type. And a nice thing here in version 13, we already have these generic attributes, which means uh, we don't have to do a type of and this clumsy uh, syntax, we just can say extend object type book. I quite like that. Okay, with this, we need to introduce a resolver that will go to the REST service and fetch this JSON object and return that, essentially passing it on into our execution engine. So we're gonna introduce a new resolver here called get authors async. And we tell the execution engine that the JSON element that we return here is actually an author and that this author cannot be null. So we're using a GraphQL uh, type name because we don't have any real type in our system. Then we also inject here the book that's from our parent, uh, our parent object essentially. And from this book, we need the author ID to really fetch the author. Secondly, we are injecting the HTTP client factory here to get an HTTP client to fetch data from our REST service. We will set up the HTTP client factory later so that we configured our service where this REST service actually uh, resides and also how authentication would work and things like that. Okay, with that, let's introduce the fetch here. And uh, that's fairly basic. So we go to the client factory, create a new, new client here, and then we just gonna fetch the request, so fetch the JSON and JSON document and return the root element of our JSON document, which is the object into our system. So that's a return type. And GraphQL will know how to deal with this JSON object. Okay, with this, actually, we have done everything that we need for extending our books type. So we can go to the program CS to put a couple of things in so that these things are hooked up. So the first thing is that we need to register our extension, our type extension. So we register here the book extension with the schema configuration. And after that, we're going to add JSON support so that the execution engine actually understands JSON objects. So the last thing we need to do is register our GraphQL type document that we have down here with our GraphQL configuration. So we're gonna do add document from file here and pass in the path to this GraphQL document and then our GraphQL configuration will just read that in and apply it to our overall schema. With that, we actually are done. Apart from there is no HTTP client factory set up. So this is a new service and we are gonna add it here. And in our case, we don't have any authentication things. So it's just an open service. So we just provide the base address of our service. But authentication logic could go here like header, uh, propagation or something like this. You could uh, set up here with the HTTP client factory. Also there might, if, if you depend on critical data here, you might want to use poly or something like that to make it more resilient. We are not dealing with these cases. There are good online resources to look them up. Uh, you should definitely look at them. With this, our service is already running. We can refresh our schema here. Okay, schema is updated. And if we now go into here, 
we can see our book now has an author here and the author has name and ID. And we also can query for that. So we could go for the author and then maybe get the name and then run that. And you can see uh, the, the 50 milliseconds is actually the schema build up. So the first request here cost a bit more to build the schema, but then we had 10 milliseconds. So still pretty decent time to get that from our rest endpoint. Okay, and uh, then we have all the data integrated as we wanted them to do. We could go further and then really make the author also fetch the books, like reintegrate them, like reuse data from our services. We also could now introduce root resolvers so that we could say author by ID, but essentially that's just building out our service. So this is how you integrate REST APIs with hot chocolate with version 13. But I said I would give a little outlook here because we actually could do more. And in the next couple of previews, we actually make that much simpler because why not declare everything in here for the extension and save this pesky little resolver here? because that's a kind of a lot of C-sharp code that I still have to write here. And um, how could we make that disappear? So we talked about that in our team. And what we're going to introduce is a couple of new directives here. An HTTP directive that is able to fetch data from REST endpoints and also a variable directive that allows you to declare some variables that you can then use to customize the request URI or define some headers. With this, it's really easy because you can just extend here in the document and you're done. Okay, with this, I hope you learned something new. You can already experiment with these things. I used here preview 28, which we just built in this morning. So try it out, give us feedback and help grow our project by giving us a star on GitHub. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button. And with this, I see you next time. So goodbye.